In this video, we're going to be creating a basic search engine with Elasticsearch. So we're going to store some records. Now, this could be absolutely anything. If your records that you want to store aren't title, body and keywords, that just doesn't matter at all. The concept is exactly the same. This will work for any data that you want to store and search on. Um, now, if you don't know what Elasticsearch is, then I'd go ahead and just look up uh, some basics about it because I'm not going to be covering the theory behind th how things are stored, uh, things like nodes, shards, and all that. Um, it does sound more complicated than it is, but we're basically just going to be running a, an Elasticsearch node, and we're going to be indexing documents, and then we're going to be searching on them. Now, the indexing doesn't have to be done as part of a form. It could be done just as you create, say, a forum topic or an article on your admin area or anything like that. And then you can just go ahead and on the front end, perhaps where your users are searching for things, you can go ahead and search for things and that will give you results. Now, in this case, I've just searched for A. You'll notice how quick this actually is. If we look inside of our um, of our index uh, called articles, this has three records and you can see how much data is here. Now, this is obviously not a lot of records, but... Elasticsearch is extremely fast at searching. We're going to be looking at a very, very basic search, but you can go ahead and use this uh, tutorial to then extend and uh, do perhaps more complex searches. Um, and if you don't understand what this is or what any of this means, don't worry. We'll be doing this from start to finish. The only thing that you're going to need to do is to go ahead and install Elasticsearch. Now, I have an Elasticsearch node running at the moment. Now, it's literally as easy as just heading over to the website. So you can head over to elasticsearch.org, hitting download, downloading it, and then just running it on the command line. It is as easy as that. If you do run into any trouble with it, just go ahead and uh, have a search and, and get it up and running. But as soon as you've got something like this up and running, you should be able to either go to a REST client like this one, or to your browser just using this URL here. So it's usually running on port 9200, which is the default, and I'm on 127.0.0.1 or localhost. And then you wanna send a get request, e.g. just copy and paste this URL into your browser and hit send, and you should get something like the following up. And that will then give you a little bit of information and you know that your Elasticsearch node is running. So once you've got all that started, we can go ahead and we can look at the PHP client. So this is specifically working with PHP to index a document and then go ahead and search the index. So let's go ahead and start doing that now. So we're going to start off with a very basic interface for both searching and adding. Now, you don't have to have these. You can work without these. It doesn't really make a difference. But if you want to get the feel of how you can combine this up with forms, particularly the front end search, then you might want to do this. Now, at the moment, this is just HTML. There's no PHP here at all. I've just removed all that. And we, in this case, can add a title, a body, and keywords through this interface. And then this would most likely be the front end search for your users. They would go ahead and type something, hit search, and the query is sent through for us to pick up in PHP, search our Elasticsearch uh, index, and then return the results. So you don't have to do these, like I said, but we do have these two forms. We've got a form here for searching with the uh, input of t uh, text input with uh, the name of Q just for query. And the same for add. We've got a title, we've got a body, and we've got keywords here. So what we want to do now is just get things set up. We've got an initialization file inside of this app directory in the folder that I'm working in. And that's where we're going to uh, initialize uh, Elastic, the Elasticsearch PHP client. So this is uh, what we're going to use to interact with our Elasticsearch node. And we can install this with Composer. So if you don't have Composer installed already, go ahead and install that. It's a dependency manager for PHP. If you do have it installed, you're just going to want to install uh, version one of Elasticsearch, Elasticsearch. So let's quickly do that now. Uh, we'll create a new composer.json file in here. Uh, like that. And let's go ahead and just require this in. Now, if you don't have Composer and for some reason you don't want to use it or you can't use it, I'd highly recommend you do. 
Uh, you probably could get away with just go ahead and downloading the zip, but Elasticsearch, uh, sorry, uh, Composer makes this so easy to get started with. So it would probably be a uh, good uh, time spent. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and install this. Let's do a Composer install, wait for that to finish. Okay, so that gives us our vendor folder with all of the dependencies for Elasticsearch. Uh, you can see it's quite heavy on dependencies, but uh, that doesn't necessarily matter. So inside of init.php, let's go ahead and just require in uh, Composer's auto loader. So it's in the vendor folder that's been created for us and also load.php. And we're going to create a new instance of our Elasticsearch client. Uh, so this is namespaced under Elasticsearch and the class name is client. Um, what we can do is we can pass in variety of options to this, but we just want to pass in the hosts key and specifically define where we're connecting to. This is a comma separated list of hosts that you can choose um, because obviously Elasticsearch is in, you know, extremely uh, scalable and it works really well across multiple machines. Uh, you can just define these here. So for example, in my case, I'm just doing 127.0.1 on port 9200 and I've already got that, um, that node up and running just here. So we have chosen this again, like I said, you can comma separate and connect to more if you need to, but this should be enough just to get you started if you're running it locally. So let's include that file on both our index and our add file uh, files, just so we can make use of that functionality. We're going to be doing this all in these files, a bit messy, but uh, we want to stay focused on Elasticsearch. So let's require in init.php and we'll do that for our add file as well and there we go we just make sure that we don't get any errors here perfect so we're now ready to actually start indexing documents now you can have postman or a similar uh, rest client open if you want we saw this a moment ago i'm just um, doing a get um, to 127.0.1 and 9200 and that's just giving me information about my Elasticsearch node and we can do things like post data to uh, Elasticsearch but first let's just take a moment to understand how we're storing data because if you've not worked with Elasticsearch before it's sometimes a little bit difficult to understand how data is stored. If you're used to working with, say, a MySQL database or another database, you'll typically have a database and then you will have tables within your database. Now, Elasticsearch can work as a database. You can absolutely use it just as your database solution or you can sync this up with MySQL. And to do that, typically, I mean, there are solutions available, but you could just store in MySQL and store in Elasticsearch then you have a uh, searchable solution with Elasticsearch. But let's take a look at how we store things. So try and ignore all this history uh, here. Um, I want to store articles. So I'm going to store within articles, article. Now this could be blog article, but I'm going to just choose a uh, plural here. So articles is effectively our database. If you think about it, we've got articles here. And then article is now our type. So this is our index and this is our type. And then after this, you can have one, two, three, four, five, whatever. You can have anything. Now, if we don't automatically give a, uh, a number here, this is the ID of the record, by the way. Elasticsearch will generate one for us. Now, if we do a get request to this, it says here index missing exception articles. That's because we don't have an index called articles. Uh, and we certainly don't have a type in here called article either. So let's actually create a new record here just to test things out. And then we'll go ahead and delete it. And I'll show you how to do that as well. So let's do a put or a post. Uh, it doesn't really matter to be honest. Um, so we're doing a put or a, a post, sorry, on this URL. Now, um, the data that you send through to uh, Elasticsearch is in JSON format, which makes it really easy to uh, structure this. It's very readable. So we're going to send a basic um, piece of data here. And all we're going to do is we're going to say title and we're going to choose a title for our article. So I'm going to say this is a test article. 
And then down here, we're going to say body. And I'm going to say this is the body of my article. I hope you like it or something like that. So now when we insert this or, or send this request to our client here, uh, that's going to store that under uh, the articles index, the type of article and at position one. So let's send that and then we get back created true and we get back this version as well. Now this version basically keeps a track of what version you're on. So if you were to uh, replace this at the same record, uh, you would get a version two. In fact, if we just send that again, you can see that we get version two and it has not been created because it already exists. It's still at ID one though, and it's still at this index and at this type. So now if we want to get that data, we just do get uh, articles, article one, and then we go, we get it back. So we get the version, we get whether it was found and this source contains all of the fields that we've already stored. So let's, for example, look at um, something a little bit more complex. So let's look at, say, some keywords. And we are going to be storing keywords with PHP. And I'm going to do this as an array. So I'm going to say test PHP. There we go. We get version 3. It hasn't been created because we or it already exists. Let's go ahead and get this. And there we go. So we've got now got this array stored in here as well. And this is also searchable. So we can do that. If you wanted to create another article, another article, you would just do it at position two. Now, what we're going to be doing within PHP is storing this with uh, randomly generated keywords, uh, sorry, randomly generated IDs for us. Now, if you want to see all of the records that have already been stored, uh, we can actually do this as a test. I'm going to do a post on article and I'm going to store this is another test article. This is uh, the body of my article. I hope you like it. Uh, it is another article and let's say, I don't know, yes or something like that. So I'm going to send this Now that's worked. It says it's created at version one and it's given me this ID back. So it's randomly generated me this ID. So if you don't mind IDs being randomly generated, this is fine. So if I want to look at all articles, what do I do? Well, I need to return back to sending a get request instead. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the type. I'm going to keep in the index and I'm going to do underscore search. Now this, um, you, you can do a post request on this to send, uh, sorry, you can send data along with this to get back uh, lots of different, um, you know, uh, use different options to search, but I'm just going to do a plain search on that. You can see here that we get uh, things like the amount of shards and which shards successful and very rarely if any sh uh, shards failed and we get this hit which is what we're interested in it says total uh, max score your articles will be or your records rather uh, will be given a score based on how they match the search in this case because we've just done a plain search they all score one in relevancy because they're all you know we haven't specified any keywords or anything like that so we get our results back. Now I'm not going to go any, I'm not going to go much further than this because it'll sort of ruin the idea of the video, which is to integrate this with PHP. If you did already know this, my apologies, but what I'm going to first do is just head over to articles like this, and I'm going to do a delete on this index. Um, we can just send that request and it says acknowledge true. If we try and search this now, you can see that we get nothing back. We get that index missing again. So we can start afresh from PHP now. So we already have our um, Elasticsearch client installed. We can actually start to build this up now and, and make it work. And it's very, it's going to be very similar to what we've just looked at. So let's take a look at actually adding documents here. So when we submit this form, we're going to have a title, a body and keywords. So let's just do a quick if statement up here to say if not empty post and in here let's do a quick check just to see if dollar underscore post title has been set check that the body's been set and check that the keywords have been set 
So I have they been included in the form. We're not going to do any validation here because it just doesn't make sense. Uh, so instead, what we'll do is we'll say, uh, let's just pull this down a little bit, actually. We'll say the title is that submitted through. The body is obviously the body. And then we have some keywords here as well. And we will be exploding these by a comma. Not great for real life use, but in our case, it's just going to take that string of keywords separated by a comma and it's going to split that up. So we want to now, once we've submitted this form, um, we can check that this is working just, I guess, by echoing out a title. So test or something like that. There we go, looks like everything works. We can now actually index this and we're, we're gonna be using obviously our client to do this. So we already have this included in index. We've already got, uh, uh, sorry, an init here. We've already got init included here. Now we're gonna be doing exactly what we've just done within Postman, but we're gonna be doing it with our client. So I'm going to store an, uh, a variable called indexed, and this is going to be using the index method of our Elasticsearch client that we've uh, created here. So we just send an array through with a similar data that we would send as a normal request that we've already looked at. In this case, I'm going to be specifying the index though. Um, so I'm going to be specifying the index, specifying the type, and then specifying the body of the request. So it's not quite what we've looked at in, in uh, a Postman, but it uh, gives a, you give all the data that you need. So obviously the index is articles. The type here is going to be article. And the body is then going to be our JSON string. Now it's not going to be a JSON string. It's going to be an array but it's going to it's going to work the same as the json string because we we have a multi-dimensional array here so it just it just works the same way basically so for the title we add the title in for the body we add the body in now when we added keywords before all we did was we added an array into the request so in this case all we do is we add in the keywords which are now an array because we exploded them so down here, what we can then do is just check if that's been indexed properly. So we can just say if indexed, would a print R on this just to see what we get back, which is quite interesting. Remember when we created some uh, data here, we got an output back from Elasticsearch telling us the ID of the record, telling us the version, whether it was created or not. So let's uh, send some, or let's send a couple of, um, uh, articles here and then we can check them inside of postman that's the beauty of using a rest client like this so let's uh, just copy and paste a load of article content this might take a little bit of a while uh, but it'll be worth it trust me so let's take all of this data I mean if you're doing this as an example try and include as much data as you can so I'm going to do net magazine and I'm going to type generate hit add there we go so we get this array back here, which is the, exactly the same as what we saw when we added articles here a moment ago. The version, the, whether it was created, which is one or zero, true or false. The ID, which we're automatically generating here because we're not specifically defining an ID. If you wanted to do that, all you need to do is say ID like that. Pretty straightforward. Um, and yeah, that's it. So let's just create uh, some more articles here. So let's... Copy and paste these. And let's add net magazine as well here. Remember these keywords are going to be searchable even though they're in an array. Uh, this is what makes Elasticsearch so great that we have really good searching ability, obviously. Um, so let's grab one more article. We'll just have one more so we don't bore ourselves to death. And let's grab as much as we can from this one. Like I said, if you're doing this yourself, you want to grab as much data as you can and as many articles as you can. You could even use something like Faker, which is a, um, a sort of fake generation library of PHP. Um, this would basically just mean that you'd be inserting loads of lorem ipsum and you could just test how fast things are. So net magazine and UX for the keyword and add that in. Cool. 
So we've now got three articles in there. We can't search because we've not added the ability. That's just as easy. But let's head over to Postman and actually do a search on this articles like we did before. And here we go. So we've got a total of three hits, a maximum score of one, obviously, because there's no relevancy because we haven't provided any keywords. And we've got all of the data in here, including the keywords that we stored against these. So we've got Net Magazine. We've got a space here because we didn't do it properly in PHP, but you know, we're only testing things out here. Uh, that won't matter to Elasticsearch anyway. So we've got all the data in here. Everything looks good. Um, and that's it. That's it pretty much. We've We've got all we need. So we can specifically look at an article if we use its ID. So I can do a copy on that. So I can say articles, article, paste that in. And that just gives me back that one article. You get the idea. So now we want to actually search, which is obviously the heart of Elasticsearch. We actually want to search out of the data that we already have. So inside of index.php, uh, we have this as a, uh, a get request. So when we actually do type in something, so say we were searching for net magazine, we get this as a as a query up here. So we know that that's in the get super globals. So let's do uh, an if statement here, much like we did on the other page. And let's say if get, uh, oops, sorry, if, uh, yeah, we could say if is set get q. Just test that out. There we go. And when it's not set, we shouldn't see it. Cool. So we are checking if uh, that's been set. And now we can just store that in a variable just so we can quickly use it later on. Um, and now we actually want to use our Elasticsearch instance again to actually search our index. So I'm going to call this variable query. And we're going to use the search method on the Elasticsearch library. And again, we pass in an array. Now the body, now this, we did, we don't sort of typically, well, we don't at all if we're doing say a search on, oops, sorry, get, if we're doing a search on this, when we do send over a body, if we, if we want to, we wouldn't say something like body, body is just what you use within the uh, library. So here, this is the body of the request. So inside of the body, we're going to have another array. Remember, we use multi-dimensional arrays to sort of uh, simulate the JSON uh, nature of this. We're going to send over a query. Now, the query is going to be a Boolean type query. So we say bool. Now, there's so many different ways that you can search on Elasticsearch. But in this case, I'm saying multiple query strings. So basically what we're doing is we're saying uh, we have this query. Remember, we're doing a get to underscore search. Um, in this case, we're doing a post so we can send uh, some data along with it. We are defining that this is a query. We're saying we have a bool query, a bool type query, which you can read about uh, if you head over to the site, uh, the Elasticsearch site. And we're saying should. So we're saying should match. The title should match war and peace. And another match, the author should match someone. So in this case, we can use this for our own uh, fields. Now, depending on your data, depending on how you want to return data, depending if you want to really speed it up, if you've got lots of data to search, you may not want to use this. You may want to use something else within um, Elasticsearch. So you might want to use filters, which are uh, you should generally use over queries. Um, but we're just sort of, you know, doing an example here. We're getting a feel for the library. Um, and in this case, with this small amount of data, generally there's not, not much wrong with doing this. So under here, we're going to pretty much just replicate what we've just seen over on Elasticsearch here. So our next is should. So we're going to say should. And then we're going to say in here, this is an array. Match. And then we have an array there and then we have match here again and we have an array there. So the first is the title. And in this case, we want this to match the query that's passed through uh, basically with our uh, get request here to this page. And we want to search the body as well. Now, what we can do here then is under here, 
I'm going to do a quick if statement and I'm going to say if query hits total is greater than or equal to one, then down here, I'm going to say results is query hits hits. Now in actual fact, before we do any of that, let's just do a quick print R on the query that we get back, just so we can see what data that we're, wor uh, we're working with here. And let's wrap that in pre tags just so it looks a little bit neater. Okay, so under search, we're then going to search for say A, hit search, and there we go. Almost, well, in fact, uh, three of our three records have A in it, unsurprisingly, in either the title or the body. And you can see here that we've got array, hits, total, which is what we looked at just here hits total. Obviously, if there are no hits, you'll get something like if we just change this here, we get hits total at zero. But in this case, it's three. We've got a max score here and we have a relevancy which is actually now working. So we've got this uh, score here. And I think this automatically orders by relevancy, which is obviously handy, you can change this, we're not going to be going into that just now. So we've now got our hits. So these, this is an array, obviously, with um, a, uh, it's a numerical array. And in here, we can just iterate through these and then output the results, basically. We can give the score if we really wanted to. There probably wouldn't be any need. Uh, but we've got the title in here. We've got the body in here. And we've got the keywords in here, which are, again, come back in an array again, which is really useful because then we can output the keywords. So that's the result set we get. So we can do, we can sort of work with that as it comes back from the Elasticsearch PHP client. So we've now got the results down here. So let's just be a little bit messy and just output them down here by breaking out of PHP and coming back into it. Uh, you will obviously have a more elegant solution. Um, but in my case, I'm just going to be doing this uh, very roughly. So PHP tags down here. Let's check if not, uh, sorry, if is set results. Now, if the results are set, we can go ahead and loop through them. So I'm just going to break out of PHP here. And in fact, no, I'm not. I'm going to do a for each. So we're going to say for each results as R. And then we're going to break out. And here we are going to just create a, you know, an element with a class. It doesn't, it's not really relevant to what we're looking at. So we've got a, a result here. We'll create an anchor for this. And we'll then down here for each result have perhaps some keywords. So we'll just say result keywords. So inside of here, we want the title. So this is going to be the title. This is going to be a hash and then the ID. And then in here are going to be the keywords. So as you can imagine, if we search now, all we get is three of these with hard coded title and keywords and an ID, which isn't very useful. Now remember, I'm querying for A, which means we get three results, which is what we expect. Uh, we'll take a look at uh, changing this to search keywords and then we'll uh, search for specific keywords in just a moment. Now for the ID, this is pretty straightforward. Um, all it basically is, is if we open some PHP tags here, it's R and then underscore ID. We saw this in the output. So if you are struggling, just do a print R and results again, and uh, that will give you more information about what you can pick out of this array that's been returned. In here, we want to echo R, but this time we're looking under that source um, key, and that's title. So we now get this, we get the three titles out. And for the keywords, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an implode. So totally the opposite of what we did to put the data in. We're going to do an implode on this. Uh, remember, this is an array. So we're going to implode this, we're going to join it by a comma. And this is R. Remember, it's under source again. And this time it's under keywords. There we go. So now we should get out 
if we actually echo that, we get the keywords. Perfect. So let's do a search now for something that doesn't exist in all of these. Um, so UX, for example, if I type UX and hit search, we get first of all this because it's recognized under our keywords and it's also in the title and it's probably in the body as well. So we could do generate as well if we wanted to hit search and that gives us that back as well. Um, and HTML5 as well would do the same. Obviously this is a very small data set. So it's hard to first of all test the speed of the query. It's hard to test, um, you know, the relevancy because really if we search for HTML5, the only relevant result or generate the only relevant result is this one. So that's a very basic introduction to using the Elasticsearch PHP client. We've learned a little bit of theory about Elasticsearch itself, which always helps. You can go ahead and introduce more complex queries, uh, more so than I've done here. So things like filters, but the main thing is getting your data in there and uh, giving it a search. Oh, and actually let's uh, quickly add this match in for keywords because I've just realized that I haven't actually added that in. So when we were searching for them keywords, it wasn't looking in the keywords. Uh, so if we just do a search for say, generate, we get this up. If we were to say, only want to search on keywords, we can do that and it'll work just the same. So there's our basic introduction. Uh, have a play around with the data and see what you can do with Elasticsearch.